In this tutorial, we're going to look at spatial references within ArcGIS and we're also going to look at projections. For example, those are two-dimensional representations of the world's surface, which is obviously is in 3D glob, onto the two-dimensional display of ArcMap. And there are some considerations that we need to make for selecting certain references, projections, and whether or not we're measuring features or areas in length and so on within ArcGIS. The first thing we're going to do is download the data for our tutorial. So spatially and non-spatially reference data and just click download. It's only a small download, it should only take a second to download. I'm just going to extract our data into a known location. And I just close down the zip file. Within this, we can see that we've got several files that we're going to work with. And it's very important that you follow step by step what we're doing because I'm going to try and create some errors and so on that will sh help you understand the projections and spatial reference system within our GIS. So in our GIS, we've got fresh GIS that I've just loaded up. We're going to set the projection system or coordinate system that we're going to use and if I move my cursor around the window here you can see that we set unknown units. Currently no spatial reference has been set. Now what normally would happen is you would add your data in and then it would, the data frame here would absorb the spatial reference from the data and that would become the default. Any of the data you add in with different reference systems for example would automatically be projected to the data frame projection. So it sounds confusing, but actually it's relatively simple. What we're going to do is first get into a good habit of setting our projection system so we know exactly what it is with respect to the data frame. The data that we add in after that secondary to this initial requirement. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the data frame coordinate system. And we'll do that by right clicking on the name of our data frame, properties, and we end up here in the data frame properties dialog and we can see that we've got all the tabs. We're most interested in coordinate system. Okay? You see that we've got this prompt, it's actually relatively simple. We can search spatially for coordinate systems that fit our geographical area of interest. We can search using their name or what's known as the WKID, a unique reference number for coordinate systems. We can add or import new ones. We can also add to a favorites list selected coordinate systems that we use frequently. We can use this, um, this um, tree here. We can just navigate through to find our coordinate system. We have geographic and projected. Geographic are essentially mathematical representations of the globe. Whereas projected are actually taking that geographic projection and extrapolating it onto a two-dimensional sheet, a piece of paper, which allows it to measure incorrect distances by using a straight line, for example. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to set our coordinate system to be Geographic World WGS 1984. And we do that by just navigating through the Geographic Coordinate System, World WGS 1984. You can see here, We've got some details about this particular coordinate system, including the unique reference WKID. And we can search for the WKID in that box up there. So you, once you get to use this, you'll know which coordinate systems you use a lot of. So we just set that first, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to add in two files from the download that we've just saved onto the C drive. So through catalog, I'm just going to connect to that folder. And you see we've got several files within here. What we're going to do is we're going to add in files world polygon referenced and world polygon unreferenced first. So I'm just going to drag this one in first. And we see it displays correctly. If I move my cursor around, you can see here that as I'm around the UK, 0 degrees, 56, 55 degrees north. So that is correct. So that's been projected into the correct location. If we add in now the unreferenced data, we get this prompt, this error prompt here. It says, 
The following data source is missing a spatial reference. It can be drawn but cannot be projected. What it means is the app does not know where that data should be. And the only way it's going to display correctly is if by some happy chance the data frame coordinate system is the same as the data. I'm just going to click OK. Leave these unchecked so if you do have a problem in future you will see this same prompt. It's highly useful for you to find that particular missing layer. As we do that, you see that I should have a blue layer. It should be overlapping. Unfortunately it's not. So let's just right click, zoom to layer, see if we can find it. It's down here and you can see it's a strange shape compared to this one. That one's a bit squatter, this one. It's a little bit stretched. Okay, so we've got a bit of a problem here. And as I move my cursor, you see a clue as to what's happening. See down here, we have very, very large numbers. Whereas if we right click here, zoom to layer, we've got a more realistic minus 180 to 180, 90 to minus 90. So we've got something going on here that is putting our data in the wrong location. So the next thing to do is to do a little bit of detective work to try and figure out what's going wrong. So if we right click on World Polygon Reference and go to the Properties layer, in the Source tab, we see some extra details about the data. And as we go down here, we can see Projected Coordinate System World Mercator. And we've got Geographic Coordinate System and Datum of WGS 1984. Now, particularly here, that is telling us that that data is being projected in the World Mercator Projection System. Click OK. And we go back to our unreferenced data, Properties. Now, we're missing all of this data. It's undefined. So the basically, app map does not know what data, what projection system that data should be in. So we need to fix it in order to make it display correctly. So I'm just going to zoom back to this area here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a tool in app map, which is known as define projection. So this is a, going to give us an insight now into a whole suite of hidden tools that you can find within ArcGIS. And we can access this in two ways. One, we can click on the red toolbox icon on the top, or we can just bring out the sidebar here, which brings up all of these tools, which allow us to do more advanced spatial operations, data management, and so on, that we couldn't do just by dragging, clicking, and docking. But these here will allow us to do some things. So what we're going to do, we're going to locate the Define Projection tool. And we can find this in Data Management Tools, Projections and Transformations, and Define Projections there. We can also search for it by just clicking the Search tab and typing Define Projection. And it brings up two options. We want the Data Management version of the tool. So we just bring that up. Two different ways of accessing the same tool there. So, I'm going to find the data that I want to define a projection for, which is the unreferenced data set. You see it says here, Coordinate System Unknown. Now, it's key that you do know what the projection system is. Otherwise, you may end up with some undesirable positioning, some errors and so on appearing. Now, I know because those two shape files are identical. I've just damaged the listing of the coordinate system in the unreferenced file. So I know it's World Mercator. So I'm just going to define that by navigating through exactly the same prompt that we've seen before. But this time I'm going to go to Projected Coordinate Systems, World, and Mercator here, with a WKID of 54004. Click OK. And OK again. We should have to wait a second. But what we should see is a blue colour to the land in a few moments. And you can see that we've got these padlocks here. And there we go. So if I turn this on and off, you can see now that our data is appearing in the correct location. You only ever have to do that once. Because now our map will have saved a projection system file alongside all of those other shape files within this directory. That's PRJ. If we scroll down here. 
can see that in reference, we have this PRJ file now. So ArcMap now will always know where that data should be, irrespective of what you set the data frame coordinate system to be. So now we're going to do a little bit of exploring, just to see what the impact of changing projection systems of the data frame will happen, and what will move the data around to allow us to see what it might look like in a different projection system. Now ArcGIS does this on the fly, so you can have multiple data sets with very different projection systems, but ArcMap will show them into the correct location when you change the data frame. So it's called on the fly projection. And it's quite interesting to see how it happens. So I've given in the worksheet a few options of different kinds of projection systems that you might want to look at. So we just go right click on the name of the data frame, properties, and in here I'm just going to start typing some WKRDs in. So I'm going to try with 54051 and search. So this is cube. So let's just have a look and see what happens. We see that our data has been projected into sides of a cube. So we could actually print this up, fold it, and we can actually create a cube of the world. So quite interesting. Look. So if we go properties again, and we change this time, we're going to search for World Robinson. 54030. Now you can see the tree, so you could find it by manually navigating in future. And we see that we've got a little bit of a rounded element now to the world. So it's starting to squish down the higher latitude data. Let's try a UTM coordinate system. Properties. UTM, Universal Transverse Mercator, GBGS Nature for Datum, Northern Hemisphere, and we want Zone 30, which is around about the UK. Okay, so you see here we've got a UTM zone. These are pretty good for measuring, so we can measure in the correct zone that your data is found in. You can get reasonably accurate measurements. So that's UTM Zone 30 North. Let's just have a look now at a national grid. Okay, we've got National Grid, Europe, British National Grid, and it gives us a bit of an error warning here about transformations and projections. We just want to use it anyway to click yes, that's fine. And it's exactly the same almost as UTM zone 30 now. You can see my data here is quite coarse, but it's a good example of what's going on. So, leaving your projection system as it's set now as British National Grid, we're going to add in some new uh, files that we've also got in here. So we've got UK Polygon, point and reference, point and reference. Let's just drag UK Polygon in. Do an automatic transformation for us. You can see it's a lot higher resolution this first time. And um, point reference. And you see that my points have been put onto the map here. And points unreferenced. Oh, we've got another error. And our points have appeared up here. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of an exercise. What I want you to do is try and figure out what coordinate system this data is in in order to make it project correctly. So I just pause for a few moments so you can pause the video and just wait. Have a go yourself. You feel you look. It's just trying to follow exactly the same procedure as we did before. Remember, at Road Polygon, we know what that one is. The only reference one we didn't, but we can assume that we think it's this. So the same thing's happened here. The point and reference data, the projection system has just been damaged, that's all. So it's exactly going to be the same as the reference one. So I'll just pause for a few seconds. You can stop the video if you wish to work on your own or you can continue working with me in a second. Okay, so if we have a look at point reference, we we'll just right click properties. We can see here it's in WGS 1984. If we go here, right click properties, undefined. So yeah, we can assume that this data collected by GPS is WGS 1984. So we're just going to define this, what we did before, is define projection using toolbox. Point and reference, coordinate system, geographic, world, WGS 1984. Click OK and OK again. So we're waiting, hopefully it should move, and there we go. Points have now moved onto my map into the correct location. 
that's it. Now I just warn you, the data that you've downloaded, especially non-spatially referenced data, I wouldn't recommend for using for navigation or any other mapping activities, just for this particular exercise. Other data sets are better if you want to use them for your mapping activities. So, thank you for listening. I hope you found it useful.